Uh, Joshua chapter 12. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip several verses as I go down through here. <coughs> Joshua 12, 1. It says, Now these are the kings of the land which the children of Israel smote and possessed their land on the other side, Jordan, toward the rising of the sun. Now these, it's talking about they're the kings that was defeated while Moses led the children of Israel. You go down to verse 7, and it said, And these are the kings of the country which Joshua and the children of Israel smote on this side, Jordan. Well, you go down into the very last verse of that chapter, uh, verse 24, and the last part of the verse, it says, uh, All the kings, 30 and 1. 31 kings defeated under Joshua there. <coughs> I don't know how many there was under Moses. I didn't count. Um, but then you go into chapter 13, verse 1 here. And he says, Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Uh, you go to verse 6, and it says at the end of that verse, it says, Them will I drive out from before the children of Israel. Only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance as I have commanded thee. If you guys will, bow your heads with me in a word of prayer this morning. Lord, we thank You, God. We praise You. We honor You this day for everything, Lord, that You've done. Lord, already in this service, God, for the needs met. Lord Jesus, we ask You, Lord, that You just help us, God, to uh, to do Your will, Lord, to know Your will. Lord, let every need be met this morning. Lord, let that river of life flow, Lord, this morning. Lord, let it heal all that it touches. Lord, just help me this morning to preach, God. Give me the words to say. Lord, don't let me speak of myself, Lord, this morning. Lord, if there's one that don't know You, God, we ask especially for them this morning. Lord, that they'd come to know You before it's everlasting too late. Lord, it's all these things that we ask in Jesus' name. We pray. and Amen. Now... <coughs> We've talked a lot about the battle, the warfare lately. It just seemed like everything that has been pointing to that. Uh, Jeremy's lesson this morning, I don't know how many times he said the word battle. Uh, several, several times in there was the, the word battle. And, uh, you know, we, I'm not going to just try to get up here and say what he said. I'm sure to go a different direction, but still in the same, uh, ballpark here this morning talking about the battle. And I've had it on my mind. The battles that, that Moses faced and Joshua and, and all this and how that what we've got is worth fighting for, you know? That's really been my, my thought is that we've got something worth fighting for this morning. But if you look at, at all that, I'm just going to start with Moses this morning, uh, all that he had to go through and fight and endure and all that, uh, and, and all this looking for a promise, and we'll get into that promise maybe here in just a few minutes, but, you know, he fought these kings and uh, all this kind of stuff on the east side of Jordan there it talks about. Uh, he had a, a great work. He had a nation following him there. Uh, and I just was kind of thinking about all the things that Moses had to endure. Of course, you know, he's raised up in Pharaoh's house. We all know that. And, and he rose up again against one of the, the soldiers there under Pharaoh and uh, smote him when he was uh, uh, abusing the Israelites there and all that. Had to flee for his own life. Had to go out into exile himself. And finally, you know, he ends up over here somewhere else and he ends up married and he's on the backside of the desert looking at a bunch of sheep every day. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's suffered a, a great loss already from the place that he had been uh, as far as worldly goods now is what we're talking about. But he's suffered a great loss. He's left uh, uh, being Pharaoh's uh, son, all but Pharaoh's son, uh, and now is on the backside of the desert watching sheep. Well, uh, of course we know God speaks to him there, the burning bush, all that kind of stuff. And he says, I want you to go back down into Egypt and I want you to lead my people up out of there, and I want you to tell Pharaoh down there that he's to let my people go up and worship. Well, of course, Moses goes down there and tells Pharaoh that he's not very well received from by Pharaoh when he tells him that, hey, I want you to let these slaves go down here. But, you know, by and by, as time goes on, many things happen down there. And Jeremy talked about the plagues and all that, how that Israel was shielded from all those plagues that God had sent on Egypt, but 
Uh, here's Moses. He's fighting a battle uh, with Pharaoh. He, he's fighting a battle even with the Israelites down here uh, because some of them don't believe this can happen. You know, they say, "Well, uh, we've been all right right here where we're at for a long time. Uh, we, you know, we don't need anything. To just uh, you know, leave things alone as they are." So Moses begins to enter into a battle now, uh, like he's never seen before. Uh, he goes throughout this wilderness here every day, leading this children of Israel. Uh, you know, he, he's he's going there. He's following that pillar of the cloud and the, the pillar of fire and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and as time goes on, as those people there of Israel, uh, they begin to learn uh, that Moses is truly led by God, then, then uh, Moses begins to experience a rejection uh, of his own people. You see, uh, we talked about that down here the other day when uh, uh, Moses went up on the mountain there to receive the, the commands of God, uh, that when he come back down, that his face shone so bright there uh, because he had been in the presence of of Almighty God, uh, that the children of Israel feared Him and and rejected Him that day. He had to wear a veil on His face or else they wouldn't even speak to Him. They made uh, the golden calf. And uh, how many times did those children of Israel say, uh, Moses has just led us out here to die in the wilderness. We is better off down there in Egypt being slaves and all that. Uh, folks, he suffered a rejection. He, he fought a battle there uh, every day with the people that he was called to lead. Uh, he suffered a separation of his, of his family. <coughs> he was take his wife. <coughs> she went back uh, to her father's house there. I don't know if she ever uh, come back to stay or not. I know that uh, he came back down there, brought them down there for a visit. I don't know if they stayed or not, but a separation uh, from his family. And I'm going to tell you something, whether they was there uh, with him or not, he didn't have a lot of time uh, to sit in front of the fireplace and play with those children or talk to his wife or anything like that. Uh, the people of Israel bombarding him uh, with all the problems and all the issues that they had. Uh, his father-in-law finally said, uh, why don't you set up men under you to judge these matters and all that. I can't imagine uh, what Moses must have went through. I've thought about it several times uh, and just thinking about it in my mind, I can't hardly believe that anything but that Moses was just about uh, to lose his mind trying to deal with all these people. Uh, folks, what a battle the man must have fought uh, every single day of his life as he led these people through this wilderness. <clears throat> he lost his uh, sister out there in the wilderness. He, he, he suffered loss just like we do. You know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he fought these armies. You know, uh, army after army come up against him as they traveled, uh, as they went through that wilderness. They come upon uh, all these places and God would tell them, uh, go out and fight, go out and uh, destroy these people from off the land, take this land and all that. Uh, Moses dealt with death every day, seemed like, you know, fighting against all these other people and uh, God would tell them things that to our mind and to our ears uh, sound so cruel. He'd say, go down there, uh, don't leave anything alive, you know, don't, uh, don't leave anything anything breathing. You go down there. Uh, what a thing that Moses had to deal with every single day uh, to be in the will of God. But I was thinking about too, probably one of the hardest things that he had to deal with uh, was his own self. You see, there was times uh, Moses grew angry. He grew bitter just like a, a lot of us do. Uh, you know, he smote the rock. All that, that old flesh rising up. Uh, God says, go down there. Uh, touch the rock. Pray. You know, speak. Uh, let that water come forth. But Moses, because of the, the battle that went on in himself and because of the frustration that he had he went down there and he smote the rock and he suffered great punishment and great loss from God that day because of what he done imagine this man now uh, called to lead a nation and called to bring them uh, to a promised land. Folks, this is his one great hope uh, in life is to enter into that promised land. Uh, and now God speaks and He says, because uh, you smote the rock, I'm not going to let you enter into that place. Uh, I'm not let you go, not going to let you uh, set foot in that promised land, but I am going to let you uh, go up on that mountain and look over into that place. Uh, imagine the disappointment, the battle, the torment that must have went on inside of Moses uh, when God 
God spoke to him and said, you can't go. Uh, folks, I'm just trying to lay this out for you here today. I'm trying to make you see what kind of battle uh, that Moses fought there every single day of his life. Uh, it was never easy. There was never uh, a day of rest or anything like that for him. Uh, but I'm telling you, everything that he fought for, uh, every step that he made, every battle that he fought, uh, everything that he had to endure uh, was worth it just like what we're fighting for uh, is worth it this morning. Everything. Uh, everybody wants it to be easy, folks. Uh, I wish it was too. Uh, I wish this morning that I could stand up here and just tell you, uh, get saved, give your life to God, uh, come on in, it's a bed of roses, uh, nothing bad is going to happen to you from here on. Uh, folks, that's just not how it is. Uh, there's going to be a battle set in. Satan's going to come against you. Now, he's going to fight uh, that old wolf bear that Jeremy talked about. Uh, hey, he's going to be nipping at them heels, folks, taking you if he can, uh, just like we talked about down here Monday night, uh, crying wolf, there's danger out there, all that. Uh, listen, there's going to be a battle set in. Uh, but I promise you that every day you fight uh, and everything you endure, it's going to be worth it uh, in the end. It's just like that old song. Uh, it'll be worth it after all, folks. Uh, there's going to be a day when we take hold of the promises of God, when we walk into a place uh, like we've never seen before, uh, like we can't even imagine. It's not even entered uh, into the heart of man to know what God has got promised to us, folks. Hey, it's going to be worth it when we cross that line one of these days. It's going to be worth it. Hey, if you go to, you guys don't have to follow me, but uh, Hebrews six thirteen, he says, uh, "For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, uh, Surely blessing I will bless thee, uh, and multiplying I will multiply thee.' Uh, and so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Well, uh, what was the promise of Abraham? Well, one thing that he promised him uh, was a son. But you look at the life of Abraham. Now, you know, I preached a message down here a while back called Move On, Abraham." Uh, you look at the life that he had, folks. He moved uh, constantly. He sojourned through the land. Uh, he fought battles. He fought kings. Uh, he fought armies with the servants of his house. Uh, folks, lots of things coming against him. Uh, but all that time he believed. And then one day, uh, God gives him a son, a true son. Uh, he says, here's Isaac. Uh, I want you to take this son that I promised you, and I want you to take him over here to this mountaintop, uh, and I want you to plunge a knife in his chest and sacrifice him. Now to me, imagine the anguish that Abraham must have went through uh, walking that day, <coughs> taking that trip uh, to that mountain. There comes that promise behind him. Uh, there's that son walking behind him. Uh, this is my hope. This is everything I've got. I'm going to take him up here. I'm going to sacrifice him to God. Uh, imagine the anguish, folks, <coughs> that he must have felt uh, as he raised that old knife up uh, to plunge that into his son's chest. Uh, and, and the relief he must have felt uh, when that angel of God stopped him that day uh, and said, Do it, don't do him any harm. Uh, there's a ram caught in the bushes. Sacrifice this. Uh, folks, God had provided His own sacrifice that day. Uh, we've looked at that before. One thing I just... Uh, Throw in here, uh, if you look at that account very closely, uh, I, Isaac there, you know, we all picture him as being a child uh, as Abraham went to sacrifice him there that day. Uh, if you look at that account very closely, uh, you'll see in there that the very next thing that happened uh, after that was the death of Sarah. That would have put Isaac uh, right around in his early 30s, folks. Uh, you got a sacrifice willing to go and be laid down on an altar somewhere, just like Christ uh, was willing to go and lay himself down on a cross for us. Uh, we see picture after picture of our salvation uh, throughout this Old Testament. Uh, but imagine, I'm telling you, Christ, uh, as He prayed in that garden that day, the Bible says uh, that His sweat became as great drops of blood. Uh, folks, He said, uh, if, if there be any other way, I can't quote it, but let this cup pass from me. Uh, there was anguish. There was a battle. There was a warfare. Uh, but the battle He fought was worth it in the end. What we're fighting is going to be worth worth it. If you go to Hebrews 10.32, he says, <coughs> but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly, whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and affliction, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used, 
Now listen to this. For you had compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now he tells them there that uh, when you were first illuminated, but you know when you when you're first enlightened, you endured a great fight of afflictions. But he goes on to say that in verse 34 that you had great compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing that in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Well, I want you to go back this morning. For everybody that's that's a born again Christian, go back in your mind this morning, please. Uh, think on this this morning. Uh, back to the day when you were first saved. Think to that time when you were born again. And and I mention that pretty often with me. It's my testimony. Uh, but I remember that day, folks, uh, standing on that creek bank, just broken in pieces, folks. There was there was nothing left of me. I, I was so broke down, I couldn't even stand there hardly. Uh, honestly, I'm not joking. My kneecaps just jumping up and down. You know, uh, scared to death, didn't know what to do. Uh, but finally, I, I was able to, to muster up the strength and the courage uh, to step out there and, and accept Christ and accept all that He was. Uh, and folks, everything became brand new to me. Now I know that a lot of people don't believe that there's a God. They don't believe in uh, Christ. They don't believe in the things they've seen here this morning. Uh, but just like the song they sung, how great it is uh, to serve a living God, folks. What I mean, what have we made Him out to be? Well, well, he's God. He saved me. Praise God. That's all of it. Uh, folks, how disappointing would it be uh, if that was the last thing that ever happened between you and God? Uh, thank God there's things that happen after that. Thank God there's more to look forward to uh, after that. But remember that time, uh, how broken you was, the joy that came in. How uh, You remember that time, how, how you just couldn't wait uh, to get out there and tell that other person, tell that uh, that mother, that father, that son, those, those people at work what's happened to you, uh, all that. You didn't care what else happened in the world. Uh, nothing bothered you. Somebody could have broke in uh, and stole everything you had. You wouldn't have cared, folks, uh, because you had God in your life brand new and for real. Uh, but as time goes on and as these battles uh, begin to set in, as we begin to fight, uh, we get hardened and calloused and turned away from God again uh, and all that. We lose sight of how wonderful salvation really is. Uh, we lose sight of what God has actually done for us. Uh, the price that He's paid for us folks. Yeah, I've said it a lot of times. Christians act the way they do because we've forgotten what was paid for us, folks. Uh, imagine this morning the beating that He took. Uh, imagine this morning the blood running out of that body of Christ, folks. Uh, running down the cross to the ground. Uh, I'm telling you there was a great price uh, paid for me and you this morning. and We've lost sight of it because we've gotten away from our salvation. Yeah, ain't it about time we go back to that, you know? He says that you, you had compassion. You took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that, that you in heaven, uh, that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Well, uh, we knew what God had done for us when we got saved. You know, uh, we might not have understood it all, but we knew uh, that where there was an old creature, that there was a brand new one. Uh, we know we knew that there was life there that had never been there before, folks. Now, I've told this a lot of times. I remember looking around that day. The trees looked different to me. You know, the sky was bluer, folks. I, I love people I hated ten minutes before. I tell you, God changed me. Uh, he come in and done a wonderful work in the wretched body. Uh, I mean, He brought me up uh, a brand new creature, folks. Uh, if we could get back to that, if we could not lose sight uh, of what God's done for us, for what He's got for us in heaven, uh, all these things in this world wouldn't mean so much to us. Uh, I was listening to one of the Josh Hamby messages the other day. Uh, I've listened to it. I don't know how many times, but in one part of that message, he says, uh, we sold our soul for a ten cent raise. Uh, and in overtime, folks, uh, if we had more to gain in the house of God uh, than we did in the factory somewhere, we'd be here uh, instead of there. Amen? Amen. Amen. I told Roseanne on the way down here, I said, it seemed like so long since... Really, I've just felt like I've turned loose, you know. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. If you all back me just a little, I might be there, you know. Listen. He 
goes on. Listen, he's given us something in heaven, a more enduring substance. You know, we know that moth and rust is going to corrupt all we've got here, but in heaven, he's given us an enduring substance. He's given us a crown of life laid up there. He's given us a reward and all that. But he goes on to say, down in verse 36, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Well, there's a promise given, just like Moses had a promise. Now, there's a land over there promised. You know, uh, he says, I'm going to send you down there. Uh, Moses, of course, we know, like I said, messed up, didn't get to go in, uh, all that kind of stuff. But he got to look on that promise, folks. Now, here we are this morning. Uh, None of us have been able to step into that place. uh, But some of us have got to look on that promise. Uh, Some of us have got just a glimpse of that. Uh, We've seen what God's got laid out there for us. uh, But he tells them there uh, that they're going to need to endure uh, so that they might receive the promise. Promise, folks. Uh, listen, I know it's hard. I'm not. Uh, it's like I said. I'm not painting you a pretty picture this morning. Uh, some of you probably thinking, "Man, he's doing a bad job selling this." I'm not trying to sell you nothing this morning. I'm. I'm just telling you about real life. Now, I know that it's hard sometimes. Uh, your old pastor has to go. <coughs> Go through battles too. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I know all that, folks. Uh, but I'm telling you that the, the promise of God is going to be worth every battle fought, uh, every trial that we have to go through, folks. Uh, it's going to be worth everything that we may have to endure. Everything. Oh. Listen, in Hebrews 11.33, listen what some of them had to endure here. <coughs> Who, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Well, that sounds good. Stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of aliens. Oh, that's good stuff, right? We like the sound of that. Uh, women received their dead, raised to life again. Now, right here we take a little turn. Uh, and others were tortured, not accepting the deliverance uh, that they might obtain a better resurrection. <coughs> and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Uh, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Uh, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, uh, cut in pieces while they was alive. In other words, they were tempted, uh, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, uh, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, uh, of whom the world was not worthy. Folks, you imagine that. Uh, these people, uh, the Word of God says the world was not worthy of these people. Uh, it says they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. Uh, and these all, uh, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Well, they, they've not stepped into that promise yet either. Uh, but it says God, uh, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us uh, should not be made perfect. Well, we've got a great promise today. I, I, nobody has entered into that place that we'll enter into. Uh, I know some was resurrected, some went with Jesus, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. They went uh, to that place of paradise, but there's a place, folks, I believe that's never been opened yet. I think there's a door never opened that nobody's been allowed to enter into, uh, and they're not going to go till I get to go, folks. Oh, uh, what a wonderful promise. Promise. But you look at all they had to endure here, and in one place there it says uh, that they were not accepting the deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Folks, uh, it's, I don't know why I keep preaching this. I don't know why this keeps coming to me. But in 1 Timothy over there 4, it talks about the enticing spirits. <coughs> Catch a little wind here. The, the devil wants to offer you an easier way. He's got one. He's got one. He's got one. He's a... I know there's a battle, you know. You get into this, there's a battle. (coughs) The devil wants to give you a way that there's no uh, visible battle. There's a battle there, but it's not visible to us. You know, he wants to trick you. You know, trust me, I, I know... You know, I, it would have been easier on me this morning to stay at home. You know, I mean, you wouldn't believe the stuff I have to do to get here on Sunday morning. You know, uh, I set the clock 20 minutes ahead of time this morning, trying to trick Roseanne out of the bed on time. You know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Uh, rushing, rushing kids to get ready, trying to feed them, trying to get off. 
folks trying to, to study, trying, you know, trying to keep my mind clear and on God and all that, I know, I know that it would have been easier to just stay at home. And I know it would have been easier on you too. You wouldn't have the reward, the promise. The promise, you see. It's worth it. Has it not been worth it today? Hey, I mean, my goodness. It's been worth it to me. I don't know. If you go to 2 Timothy 4 6, he says, For I'm I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. Well, Paul just lays out there. He said, I fought a good fight. He said, I've kept the faith. He says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them that all them also that love his appearing. Well, Paul says it's been a fight. He told Timothy in in first Timothy to fight that fight. He told him, You fight the good fight. Fight this fight of faith. And in 2 Timothy, he says, I've fought the good fight. I've finished my course. And there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. (coughs) Folks, you can't imagine the reward. I mean, I know, it's like I said, I know we get tired physically, mentally, spiritually. There's times we think it just ain't worth it. I'm not doing any good. You know? I've done all this for nothing. But God tells us there that some plants and some waters, but God gives the increase. You never know what kind of effect that that seed you planted ten years ago will have, you know. You ain't seen nothing from it yet, but it'll be worth it. It will be worth it. It will be worth it, you know. Uh, all those people that uh, don't like to talk to you anymore down at the workplace, you know, because now you're a uh, uh, religious, you're the you're the Jesus freak or whatever they want to call you. It'll be worth it. that neglect you've suffered. It's going to be worth it, you know. All that I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm just telling you it's going to be worth it. It will be worth it. Paul said, "I fought wild beasts at Ephesus. I, you know, I fought men. I've been stoned. I've been cast out of the city, left for dead. They thought he was dead and threw him outside the city. You know, a little while later he's up going again. <coughs> How many of us would have quit? My goodness, they hit me with rocks. <laughs> you know." <laughs> Most of us will quit when somebody just talks bad about us, you know. Paul, they stoned him and thought he was dead and throwed him outside the city. And he got up and went again, you know. Folks, how many of us would quit at the first stoning? You look back at Stephen. Stephen there, a man chosen to wait tables. Oh, glorious calling there. A man chosen to wait tables. But as he waited tables, he also laid hands on the sick, healed them, all kinds of miracles and all that, and preached one of the greatest messages ever ever preached throughout the Bible. You get in there and read what Stephen preached to him, folks. I mean, he run them through the Bible, you know. Stoned him to death, and as he was being stoned to death, the Bible says that he looked up into heaven and he saw uh, Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Imagine that. Imagine being at, at that dying breath uh, and just the heavens opened up and you've been able to see Christ uh, standing there ready to receive you. Wouldn't it be worth everything you've went through? Yeah. Everything you've went through? Folks, I'm telling you. I mean, let me just, I got just a couple more verses here. <coughs> In 1 Kings 8.56, Solomon said, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto His people Israel according to all that He promised. There hath not failed one word of all His good promise, (laughs) which He promised by the hand of Moses His servant. The Bible says God is not slack concerning His promises. Solomon says there is not... There has not failed one word of all His good promise. Well, He's made us a great promise, and, and sometimes we lose sight of it. We think, well, you know, like I said, we ain't doing no good. It ain't, it ain't going to be worth it. But you go to 1 John 2.25, and He said, and this is the promise that He has promised us, even eternal life. Well, what can you promise greater than life? You know? 
What, what greater promise could there be than life? But He promises more than life. He promises life eternal. A life forevermore. You say, well, that sounds pretty good. You know, what, what's everybody else going to get? Well, you may not. You may have heard me say it. I don't know, but you may not have heard it. But there's going to be people that's going to be cast out in the torments, and guess what? They're going to live forever too. Uh, you know, we're going to be given a body like unto Christ. <coughs> that body of Christ, it was able to descend into the lower parts of the earth, take the keys of death and hell, defeat Satan, all that, come out unharmed. Right? Still alive. Able to come back, seen above 500, I think there it says, ascended up into heaven, sent back the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, all that kind of stuff. Those who are cast out are going to be given a body like unto Christ also that's going to be able to go to that place of torments and endure that throughout eternity. It's going to die and die and die, but never die, you see. It's going to be alive always. We're promised eternal life in the presence of God. How much greater? One more verse here, and somebody be getting us a song. First Corinthians nine twenty four. He says, "Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain." Well, I, it may not sound like it this morning, but I do want to encourage you. There's a there's a horrible fight. There's a warfare like most people have never known before. Uh, even most people that's, I don't know anybody's heart. A, a lot of people, you know, I, it's like David said before, different ones, you know, they, they've been under conviction. They've went and prayed off that conviction, thought they were saved and wouldn't, you know. But even some people that's really been born again, you know, they just, it's like that little girl I told about down here a while back. She fell out of the bed, and, and her mommy asked her the next morning, said, Why'd you fall out of the bed? And she said, Well, I guess I just stayed too close to the place I got in the bed. Well, a lot of Christians, you know, we get her foot in maybe, and that's where we stay. We're tickled to death right there. We never grow, you know. And they never know the warfare, but they never know the reward either. There's a battle like most people have never known. But I'm going to tell you, there's a reward. It's going to be worth everything you do, folks. Every word you speak for God, uh, every time you're rejected, every time that somebody turns their back, uh, every time they, they speak ill of you, every stone that flies, folks, it's going to be worth it when we obtain that promise. There's a promise of eternal life. And there's a promise of, you know, Christ said, they'll come to be with me. Uh, there's a, a promise of heaven one of these days. And, and we can't lose sight of that. We, we get our mind and our eyes <coughs> fixed on the temporal and we forget about the eternal. You know, we can't forget the eternal this morning. Please remember that. Uh, as we stand, I want to encourage you, please come and pray this morning. Please come and pray. Maybe you've been in that battle, I don't know. Maybe you just need to ask God to give you more strength this morning to keep fighting that battle. Just come and pray this morning. Please come and pray.
But just like this battle that we've talked about, just like everything uh, that was endured by these people of God, uh, it'll be worth your trip this morning. When you reach this altar, it'll be worth your trip. God will meet you there. God meets you there, folks. Uh, he, he won't. Uh, he won't abandon you. He's not going to do that. Why don't you come this morning? Oh, the reward, the promise of God, the promise of God. There's still time to come to this altar. Why don't you come? That's the, that's the question this morning.